Hey everybody, today we're debating evolution on trial and we are starting right now. Ladies and gentlemen, thrilled to have you here for another epic debate. This is going to be a fun one, folks. We are debating evolution on trial, and it's going to be a fun one. Very excited. Want to let you know, if it's your first time here, consider hitting that subscribe button, as we've got a lot more debates coming up. In fact, right after this one tonight, we've got a double header, Tom Jump and Nephilim Free. One of the old legends of YouTube debate in philosophy of religion, creation, evolution, they'll be debating on whether or not dinosaurs lived simultaneously with man. It's going to be terrific. It's going to be a really wild one, and that's going to be right after this one. But also, though, this one, folks, I got to tell you, we are really excited. There's a lot of, lot of energy here, I can tell you. If it gets wild tonight, I can tell you. I don't know if it's going to get as wild as it was right before we started. They are ready to go. They are excited. And so we're going to let everybody out of their cage shortly. But what we're going to do, just to give everybody a basic position statement chance, we're going to give everybody about six minutes on average. It's really up to the teams on how they divide up their 12 minutes. And after we do that, we'll go right into open dialogue. So we're going to start with Erica and Mark. And so want to let you know, folks, I put all of the links of our speakers in the description box. So if you're listening and you're like, mm, 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 I want more of that. Well, you can hear plenty more where that came from by clicking on their links below. So with that, very excited folks, I'm going to hand it over to Erica, who will get the ball rolling. Thanks so much, all four of you, for being here with us tonight. It's a pleasure to have you. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad to be here. Um, I, I do think it's probably going to get a little bit fiery, but that's all right. Um, okay, I'm going to share my screen. I've got a little, I'm probably the only one with the PowerPoint. Maybe I'm not, but you guys know me. I like my visual images. So here we go. Let's see. Hold on. All right, can you guys all see that? I gotta back it up, okay. All right. Well, I'm gonna get started if that's all right with my six minutes. Uh, my name is Erica, I have a bachelor's of uh, science and arts in animal science with minors in biology and in anthropology. And I'm currently getting my master's of research in primatology. And today we're discussing evolution on trial. Uh, even though, in my opinion, this was, in the opinion of uh, the, the vast majority of scientists, this was settled decades ago. So, what do we mean when we say evolution? Well, what we do mean is that evolution is a change in the heritable characteristics of biological populations over successive generations. What we don't mean is the Big Bang, stellar evolution, abiogenesis, an exclusive trend towards bigger and stronger, or books, computers, and car analogies. Uh, we also don't mean a, a flat earth discussion, which we might also have tonight, we'll see. So what does support evolution? Well, despite being one of the most scrutinized theories of all time, evolution finds support in every relevant field, both with regard to science, uh, life science rather, and the hard sciences. So we find it in paleontology, biology, anthropology, genetics, as well as geology, physics, chemistry, and statistics. So I'm going to be highlighting some of the life science support today since we're sort of on a limited time budget. Genetics, we've all been here before. So let's take a moment and observe this terrifying cartoon family tree for babies. Using a full comparison of each member's genome, we would be able to tell that Catherine and Amanda are more close to Dave. This is, this is just lining up your, your genome side by side and, and seeing if they match or are indeed more similar. So this is also done to, de to determine paternity. Um, this is legally binding and shows up to 99.99% that two people are or are not related and holds up in court. It's also done to determine uh, dog breeds. You can send in your dog's uh, DNA sample and get a decent estimate of what's kind of in them if they're sort of a mutt. As such, we can say across the animal kingdom that more similar genomes equals more closely related. I really don't think anyone out there is going to be arguing this. Now, I've, I've discussed with some creationists in the past sort of the, the minutia of, of whether or what the best method of determining how closely related two individuals are, and everything I have been able to find comes up with full genomic comparison. So let's keep that in mind. 
because we have to consider that when genomes are aligned side by side, um, we see a 96% similarity between humans and the members of genus Pan. So that's your chimps and your bonobos. And when we're looking at just, you know, coding base pairs, that number rises up to 98.8, almost 99% similar. Interestingly enough, when chimps and bonobos see their genomes compared to the other great apes, such as gorillas and orangutans, we see that they are more closely similar to us. So we are one another's closest living relative. Humans and chimps are more closely related than both mice and rats are to each other or house cats and tigers. Creatius would consider the above pairs to be within their own created kinds, but there is no means to classify mice's, mice's, mice and rats within a kind and then not place humans with the rest of the hominoids. What about paleontology? Let's zip through this. We're going to look at a bunch of cool fossils. Essentially, the general trend here, since we're going to keep it pretty, pretty, you know, brief today, is can we or can we not show a gradient of more basal characteristics in a common ancestor to more modern morphology in modern animals? And if we can do that, this is a testable prediction that can be made and either confirmed or denied by evolutionary theory. So let's consider of course, our hominids, yes, we can, of course, confirm that what we're seeing here is small morphologic change through geologic time. As I say every time, it's very difficult to see B overnight becoming something like M, but from B to C or C to D or D to E, it's not rocket science. This is, this is very small incremental changes that result in what is macroevolution. We can look at one of our favorite mosaics, Lucy, Australopithecus afarensis, and indeed also Australopithecus africanus. We see nearly identical knees, a parabolic palate, an inline big toe, a pelvis that is much more similar to a modern humans than to a chimpanzee's, <clears throat> and of course, a more ventral frame and magnum. What about our tetrapods? Well, guess what? Morphologic change over geologic time. Through the various strata, we see the modern tetrapod traits emerging, going from Eustenopteron all the way through Acanthostega and to Tularpeton. What about mammals? Same situation. Look at our look at our synapsids and our polycosaurs through our flat or through our therapsids and indeed to our cynodonts. What do we see? Morphologic change through geologic time. You'll notice that those sprawling legs are going underneath the body. We're seeing heterodontia arise, et cetera, et cetera. But we can see this in a modern analog as well, because when we compare, it says dragon here, but what that actually is, is an agama. It's a type of lizard. When we compare an agama lizard to a fossil mammal relative, this one is Thraxodon, and also a newborn kangaroo rat and an adult kangaroo rat, what we see is the mirrored movement of the inner ear bones. We're seeing what is essentially a recapitulation of the, of the uh, evolution of the auditory oscules in the first place. This should not be the case if what we're dealing with is, is a sort of created kinds. Whales, same situation. Did you know that whales have the same knees as modern ungulates? Well, they do. There's a picture of it right there. They also have similar ankle bones when in sort of the individuals that we find them in. And there is a structure in the inner ear known as the involucrum, which is exclusively found in modern cetaceans today, so dolphins and whales, and can be found in a single lineage of, te of uh, terrestrial mammals that walked on all fours. And then slowly through, of course, geologic time, we see them take to the seas. So all of this is still observation and it's still empirical. As I've said before, um, many observations in, in sort of astronomy, medicine, and geology aren't direct observations with your eyeballs, but rather they're an interpretation of data, or in the case of medicine, symptoms, and an appropriate sort of conclusion is reached from those data points. So what we need to do to begin to sow doubt for evolution, what our interlocutors must do today, is they must invalidate a full genomic comparison as the best means to determine relatedness. They're also going to have to provide an, explanations for, an explanation rather, for why fossils show morphologic change through geologic time and why these changes seem to match the divergence ranges given by genetics. That's an awfully big coincidence. And of course, if we can touch on it, I would love to see them put forth an invalidation for radiometric dating as a means to determine the very ancient age of the earth. I hope that was within six minutes. I really rushed through it. You could hear me stumbling over my words.
Well, I don't think I'll need a full fi- uh, six minutes there, uh, there, James. The, the only thing that I'd like to add to what Erica had to say is we could take basically all of the, um, and we talked about this earlier today. Uh, Eric and I had a, a call around lunch today and we talked some of this stuff over. Um, with what we found out in genetics over the last 50 years, we could take pretty much all the skeletons that we have, all the fossils, everything we have, and uh, we could throw it all in the dump. We really don't even need it. Genetics show us everything everything that we could possibly ever have dreamed of having. Um, You can see where retroviruses were injected into DNA. And I've I've had a chance of talking to these two guys here um, before we we came on air tonight. And and some of their opinions are just really out there. You're going to hear a lot of um, this is the fact, just believe me because I say so. So what Eric and and I are going to talk about tonight is what uh, 98, 99% of scientists this um, pretty much agree on. There, there's always a, a fringe factor. You're always going to get scientists out there who are going to believe in gods and they're going to they're going to warp um, what they see in reality to try to fit a god in. You can see Hugh Ross do it. You can see a lot of people really doing some mental j- gymnastics that are, are really Olympic class g- gymnastics, to be honest with you. But yeah, in, in genetics alone, we have everything that we could ever need. And we could just take everything. We could take all those skeletons that, uh, that Erica just showed us. We throw them all in the garbage. We have everything. And like she said, this can put people in jail. We have cases now that are that are 50, 60, 70 years old that we're pulling DNA um, evidence out on and we're putting these people in jail. Now, yeah, a lot of them are, are very old people that have committed crimes at a young age, but uh, that's how accurate this stuff is. That This isn't something that we just make up and it's a big conspiracy and, and genetic Genetics are something that we're told by the government, and it's it's all some underhanded thing to make you believe that uh, certain things are going on. No, we, we put people in jail over this for lifetimes. So so there, there there's no doubt that that this stuff is real. Um, and, and I think what you're going to hear tonight is really not a, a debate on on anything to do with reality. I, I think what you're going to hear is a whole pile of uh, we're being duped by the scientists and. And we're being told things and we're to believe this and we're we're idiots because we believe what all these scientists have to say. Well, I'll tell you right now, I've worked on a lot of stuff. I'm 52 years old in my life and I never went to a special meeting where we all sat around and said, we're really going to try to pull this over the 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 eyes of the general public. We're really going to try to to make them think that vaccines are all a conspiracy and this is a conspiracy. And that's what you're about to hear tonight. So enjoy. This is going to be more of a circus than learning anything. I've already talked to these two guys and, uh, you know, they're both flat earth creative flat earth creationist which you know you put those two together and really what what's left for for common sense but take her away there guys Let, let's hear some of this rhetoric i'd love to hear it very sassy and austin and nathan the floor is all yours thanks for being here as well oh what's up thanks man um yeah just like last minute but this is actually in my opinion not going to be that difficult uh this dude just spewed a bunch of ad homes like that makes his point mean anything he appealed to authority uh appealed to a majority and uh, that means nothing um so it's very simple in order to substantiate the postulation of evolution you're going to have to uh, present some evidence of intermediate species you cannot just claim some similarities and genetic sequences thus equate to a change in species speciation that makes no sense you're also going to have to address biogenesis right or uh present some form of postulation that would be counter to it. So really it's that simple. I don't need six minutes. Uh, Evolution is a positive claim that thus has the burden of proof. So you can't shift the burden of proof, that's a fallacy. So, you know, we'll just keep an eye on who's really, you know, lacking evidence and presenting fallacious arguments because you can ramble on about uh, a bunch of scientists think this, but that doesn't mean anything. Pseudoscience is an actual fact. So it's it's that simple for me. That's all all I gotta say. Excellent, Austin, I'll take it away. Hey guys, my name is Nathan Thompson. Uh, I run the official Flat Earth and Globe discussion on Facebook. It's 130,000 people. We're doing independent research. There's no cursing or insults allowed. So we take it very seriously. If people don't take it seriously, we kick them out. 
We've got about 10,000 people on our block list. So, I mean, if people want to come in and troll, it can just be another drop in the bucket. But we are there to talk about real science, real observations, what are the facts. And the only one anyone ever believes in this space monkey evolution nonsense is because a man told them about it. And they usually told them about it at a very young age when people are gullible. So the only barrier from the truth is the preconceived notion that you already have it. So if you think or you think you're right or you think you know what the facts are and you're not open, well then that is the only barrier from the truth. Now evolution stems from the theory that the earth is a spinning globe. Nobody, I repeat nobody, on our stationary beautiful flat earth thinks that their great great grandparents were a sponge. Okay, they, they don't believe that their great great grandparents were some sort of shape shifting monkey man that eventually proliferated into humans. Okay, that, so and nobody would think that unless they were taught that in school. There is no scientific evidence for this nonsense. As Austin said, you can't just claim they have similar genes. So there was a change in speciation. You can't just claim that these two fossils have similar arms. So there was a change in speciation. That is a joke. That is a, a device that they are using to deceive you. And when you're six and seven years old, you'll fall for it. But when you're an adult and you're a critical thinker, we shouldn't be falling for this kind of hocus pocus, booga booga pseudoscience nonsense. Okay. The scientific method is an observation first, then a hypothesis, then rigorous experimentation. So I saw it, uh, Erica had up on her screen astrology, and then it said observation and em empirical, as if looking at the stars is anything empirical. You can't manipulate the cause of any effect in space because nobody is going to space to manipulate cause and effect experiments and test things. All you can do is observe and they have to presuppose that space is real, that it's a real medium, that those are distant objects, light years away, everything's a ball, they're all gases in a vacuum. The definition of a vacuum is um, absence of gas. So if you believe that planets are gas pressure, get pressurized planets in a vacuum, you're just scientifically illiterate. Okay. And so, yeah, he talked about, um, oh, how we never met and said, we're going to hide all this stuff for vaccines. Dude, you never worked on vaccines. You're an engineer. Okay. So why would you ever be in a meeting where a bunch of people are discussing how they're going to hide the truth about vaccines from people? I mean, that is the biggest gaslight from what we're here to talk about, period. You said we put people in jail. It's real. A as if... Throwing someone in a cage is scientific evidence of something. Like, what kind of joke is that? Then you said um, all the skeletons and fossils, we could throw those in the dump. All right, great. So we will. You said genetics show everything. You're right. They do. They show that, that information doesn't come from nowhere. Okay. And also entropy. Things are not mutating and getting more magnificent and more creative and more uh, uh, developing new arms or new wings or, or multiple limbs or gills so they can breathe underwater. That ain't happening, okay? S certain genetic code produces certain animals and that's all we see. So that's all the time I need. Thank you, James, for the time. Let's get into the back and forth. Thank you very much. We will now jump into the open dialogue as Nathan has mentioned. And want to mention, I'm so sorry, even the description for this debate, strangely, I was looking for Mark's link from past debates. All of our descriptions from past debates are currently gone. I don't know. Uh, it, let me know if anybody else is experiencing that because I do try to make it a priority to put everybody's link in the description and including tonight's description is blank. So I'll figure that out. But in the meantime, uh, so give me feedback if you got it in the live chat. Thanks so much. And the floor is all yours, everybody. Thanks again for being here. And I will work on getting your guys' links in the description. Thanks for being here. The floor is all yours.
Well, well chances are you, you won't, James. It's a conspiracy. It's, it's the majority of people. It's a conspiracy. And all those links are gone. And everything's a conspiracy. And what you need is you need a few millennials to sit there and tell you that everything that we've done and worked on over the last hundred years, yeah, you got Kent's SpongeBob there, yeah. Like we're dealing with some people here that are, that are very special. Let, let's just say that. They don't believe in anything. All the vaccines, everything is a conspiracy. Uh, the earth is obviously flat. Like that just makes a lot of sense. Everything tells us that the earth is flat. And they're gonna sit there in their stunnedness, especially this Nathan guy. He's incredibly stunned. He's probably one of the dumbest people that I've come across on your entire channel. But uh, in, in, in public, let, let's put this out there. Tonight, I am willing, willing, here and, and that nothing, no bullshit here. This is when it comes down to money. One thousand dollars I will put in your account, James. He will do the same. And I'm gonna tell you, he tried to tell me earlier that the speed that we see the International Space Station go across the sky is wrong. So I'm gonna tell you that exactly the height that they say it is. We will work it out. I will do it all on video and we will see how many arc minutes it travels. And if it travels the right amount, I win. If it doesn't, he wins. So so you're you're dealing with a clown here. He started off the night with you don't know who I am. I'm the head of the Flat Earth Society. No. Total clown here. So let's hear this clown talk. I think I think everyone will just pretty much figure out what he is. Well, and if evolution, if evolution is not real, then what is it? Is it a god? What's this guy's point? Like, what's this clown have to say here? Is it a god? What are we talking about? So let me let me get in on this real fast, Mark, because I um, you know, I don't say this a lot, but honestly, I I really I really feel like my entire opening statement was completely ignored or just not not it observed was. at all. Um, yeah, it was. Sorry, but yeah. Mark did say that all the fossils and all that stuff we could throw in the dump. He yeah, say, okay. right. yeah, and, and that's fine. That's on, fine. We could focus yeah. on the genetics. Right, right. and that's uh, fine. We could. That's Let's fine. Focus. I'm with you. But the thing is, is that Austin prior, and I know you guys didn't didn't have a discussion beforehand and decide on what you were going to go over, but he asked right for transitional forms. Now I know he was present for my opening statement, at least for part of it. So I find it very, very difficult to to sort of reconcile that fact um, with the fact that he, you know, he saw my opening statement. He saw probably two dozen pictures um, showing morphologic change over geologic time, which is what evolution predicts. Then turns around and says, "Show me the transitional fossils." I did. That's that not what I said. That's not what I said. I said intermediate species. Those okay. are the. No, 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 no. Do we have any intermediate species that are alive that we can observe, please? Yes. How about dog? How about dog and wolf? How about that? How about, you happy with that species? one or no? That's, how that's about the same species. How about wolf to dog? Are you happy with that one? That's the same the species. species. Oh, it is. Okay, I yeah. see. So we could take dogs and we could breed them back to wolves. Is that what you're telling us? No, I'm saying, can you show me where a monkey has turned into a Neanderthal and then a human? And where's the intermediate? You just said living species. You just said living. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying, why is there not intermediate species? Wait, wait, wait. Are you asking? Living? Are you Are you asking? Hold on, Mark. I need. I really need a second for this. Are wow. you asking? If we came from monkeys, why are there still monkeys? Is that is that what I'm getting? No, no, no. With no. what I'm asking is limited? where's the intermediate species? So you're asking for transitional forms. That's that's no, what no. I show. Okay, look, let me say this. If we come from apes and then yes. there's Neanderthals, now there well, are we don't apes. come from apes. We are apes. <sighs> We don't come from apes. We are apes. Is that why you keep interrupt interrupting him? Is because yeah, you think wait, you're wait to skew your begging. Yes, I'm an ape. Yes, that's right. We okay, we are great. apes. Cool story, dude. Hey, monkey okay. man, can you stop interrupting the debaters? Is that okay? Why can you either one of you? I know you love to okay. go on your rambles about your little PowerPoint. Okay, there were apes and then there were Neanderthals, and then there were humans, right? Well, no, oh, okay. no, so there were no, no not at all. 
That's that's completely incorrect, though, Austin. Completely you're, you're wrong, as stunned as no, stunned I, can be. I mean, that's the thing. Like, I'm so again to reiterate from my opening statement. Um, I'm getting my master's degree in primatology, so that's primates, right? The Conspiracy. Order of primates. Mm -hmm. Conspiracy. So, so when you say things like, so there's an ape and then a Neanderthal and then a human, nope. you couldn't, you couldn't be more off. And, and, you know, I really want to take this opportunity to, to, to elucidate this for you. We share a common ancestor with chimpanzees from about seven, dated from approximately 13 to 7 million years ago. This organism was called Sahelanthropus chadensis. Then you have a bunch more intermediate species, exactly what you're asking for, with traits that aren't quite completely basal, that is to say, more similar to chimpanzees, but not quite derived, that is to say, similar to humans. You have about 17 of those, Austin, 17 hominids that traverse through geologic time with slow incremental changes that are a ratio of ape traits. When I say ape, I'm using this colloquially from, as in our common ancestor ape with, uh, with chimpanzees and human traits. Are you with me so far? Yeah. Where did okay. this genetic code come from? Okay. Th that's completely not what we're chatting about. I would love wow. to talk about Holy shit. This. No, I just, uh, where I you guys are come saying from? that monkeys Emily, like, where does pudding come humans from? Humans over time. Yes. I'm just wondering, because, I mean, we can take all the fossils. Mark said that, throw it in the trash. How did sure the genetic can. code, right, the code, insert new data on its own out of nothing to create Nathan, humans? You, what's different from, between, what is different between no. you and a chimpanzee? Or you and a raccoon. Uh, well, I What's don't different about food. you I don't and a raccoon? My own piss. I didn't, I what? missed that. Say that again. I don't throw my own poo. I don't drink my own piss. I can reason between right and wrong. I'm. You, what you does know. any of that have to do with genetics? Those are all behaviors. Can I step in, oh, Erica? Okay. Well, well, because I'm man rapes, man rapes, man kills. Man does incredibly shitty things to man. Animals so do what's that this? Too. What is this clown talking about? Animals that he do that doesn't too. throw his own poo. What are animals, you talking about? Animals do all that stuff too. What are you talking about? He's saying that. So what are, are you talking about? Your proof that you are not a monkey is you don't throw your own poo. Do you no, think you can't find a human that has grabbed a handful of shit and thrown it at someone? Is that really your argument? Are you really that stupid? Really? That's okay, just, wait up, wait up. I want to get back to this point. I do too, Austin. So you claim that there's this gradual evolution over millions of years and that we're changing forms, changing species. Okay, so if we go from ape to human over millions of years, where are the ones that are in the middle? Because you claim it is a constant, gradual process, yet we have apes, we have humans, we have none of the intermediate species. Can you please respond with specificity? Yes. So Austin, do you think do you think that evolution doesn't act also on chimpanzees? If we share a common ancestor, which we do, both of us have been changing through time in accordance to our environmental pressures. Now, if you really want to get into the nitty gritty, I can do so quite quickly. I'm going to I do just it. I want you to answer my question specifically. Or, what, what, what question? You're asking he for He wants something? to know when an eight turned into an eight. You got to answer that. This is the kind of no, stupid no. talk. You know, that's what I said. When I did an ape no, become an eight? Cool straw man. I thought you were the smart one. When did an ape become an ape, Erica? I so when that. did an ape? Uh, well, a, an I, earlier I, hominoid. When did an earlier hominoid become a hominoid? And by the way, we have three to four percent genetics that we share with Neanderthal man. So yeah, we we've got that issue to talk about too. So so Austin, again, what you're asking for is precisely what I showed you pictures of. You're asking why do none of these organisms exist today? Is that what I'm picking up? Correct. Okay. Excellent. So you you really truly are asking if we came from monkeys, why are there still monkeys? As in no, why are no. Monkeys? We have to go over this again. Hey Nathan, 
You I'm just important. said no already, and you asked Nathan. the same question. You're repeating yourself, Erica. Nathan, what I need from you is for you to turn your mic down. What I need from you is you to stop repeating yourself over and over. It would be it would be a lot. Already answered. It would be a lot easier if either of my interlocutors were either. Uh, you're obfuscating them. Yep. Yeah, you want to ask that question a third time? Go ahead. Ask yeah, my question was not why are there still monkeys? I very clearly specified what I'm asking. Where is the intermediate species? Since it's a constant process over millions of years, there would still be an intermediate species because it's constantly happening. Where are they? Austin, you're asking for an entire lineage to be represented constantly. If that were the case, then everything that ever evolved would be present in the biosphere at the same time. The reason why all of the intermediate forms are here, but they're dead and in the ground, is because they were outcompeted by their own descendants. That's what evolution is. Do you, do, you guys, do you guys understand the basic under so, like, I'm, I'm so the evolved monkeys couldn't survive, but the ones that didn't evolve, they made it, right? Yeah. They made it because they, they didn't evolve, right? That's the so stupidest evolution. thing. Yeah. That is the oh, stupidest thing this I've ever heard. It. And it came from exactly the moron I thought it would come from. More Someone who thinks the More earth is flat. Man. No, cool so what he's trying to say right now is that we are the unevolved ones. Is that what you're saying? No. All you do is just misrepresent what people say. Well, well when you're this stupid, when you say stupid shit like the two of you, what would you like us to Anything? say? She showed you. She showed you all of the intermediates in her inner opening. And then you, you morons come on and you go, oh, where's the intermediate? So she just said she doesn't have any, out. they all die. There's monkeys. She just Why said she didn't have monkeys? any intermediary if, species. Okay. They all monkey. die. One Why don't I here? throw my poo? This I'm guy's a over here saying, okay. what's what wrong with you? We're going they to switch back to the original question. She just said she didn't have any. They all die. I've got to, hold on a second. I don't want to mute you. Hold on. I don't this guy's want you what to. So what we are going to do is to we're going to jump into. I think the last thing that Erica had said. I think that Erica's been calm, so I'm going to uh, kick it back to Erica, and uh, then we'll go from there. So whatever your your last point was, Erica, or question. Oh yeah, sure, James. Yeah, I mean the thing is, is I like I said, I'm not about to get riled up by by you know any of this kind of behavior. I don't I don't particularly find it um, anything but slightly slightly. Um, uh, inconvenient and, and irritating because it's hard to hear what everyone's saying. And I'm sure, I'm sure uh, you feel the same way as, as the moderator. I know it sucks to have to do that. Um, but yes. Yeah. And Nathan, everybody's telling you to turn Nathan down too. His gap is really too loud. If you look in here, he just keeps screaming into the thing. Stupidity. Right. Everybody on the chat saying, turn that idiot down. Yeah. Thanks, so, for, with your partner. thanks for your feedback in the live chat, letting me know that my audio was, uh, my, my mic unplugged. unplugged, but we're going to go back to Erica now. Yeah. So, so to, so to clarify, you know, evolution as, as by its very nature, organisms that are more fit for their environment are going to be selected for when they have been sufficiently selected for so that they're either reproductively or genetically isolated, that's called speciation. And that's when an organism that has descendants that are more fit than it is sort of usurped by that organism. So anytime you have, I, I'm sure these guys have, have taken um, biology and understand what a niche is, which is basically, you know, an, an, a position in uh, an ecosystem that is quite specific. Two organisms can't occupy the same niche. So if you have a chimpanzee and a human, which of course occupy very different niches, one lives in a rainforest and the other formerly lived on the savanna, everything in between occupied the same niche or attempted to occupy the same niche as humans, because according to human evolution and general anthropology, it's heavily suggested that a change in environment is what spurred all those changes. That's what evolution and selection is. So to even suggest that all of the intermediate organisms or by their official term, transitional species would exist at the same time, it would completely disprove evolution. What, what you're asking for Austin is for me to provide evidence that would disprove my own 
position. And that's no. what we're going to say. No, okay. That's just, yeah, you, you kind of straw man it, but it's really pretty simple. It's, it's going like to sound, like sound like I'm being reiterative because you aren't actually uh, being specific to the question, right? But it's very simple. If it's a constant process over millions and millions of years, conveniently to make your population unfalsifiable, right? It's purely theoretical conceptual abstractions that you make unfalsifiable, but nevertheless, and you act like it's science, I'm asking you very specifically, if it's a constant process over billions of years or millions of years, and it's always happening, which means it's happening right now, we're still evolving, apes are still evolving right now, right? That's what you yes, said. Okay, yes. where are the ones that are in the middle? Mark, you got to help me out here. He's asking for transitional species, isn't he? Everybody on the on the chat here is saying, I got to help you out. I, I, what do I even say to that? I don't know what he's talking about. Is he asking where the, uh, like, where did the dinosaurs go? Does, do, do these people not realize that 99.8% of the things that have been living on this earth are no longer here? Uh, how how do you miss this much? How many how do you miss this many days of school to not you realize? Mom, dude? You're oh, an adult. Hold on, hold on. We're we're getting more yapping here. I'm I'm heard that I'm talking over everybody, but apparently he's talking over. We'll go. So over go it. ahead, yap away. I promise we'll come no, right back no. to you, Austin. But we'll let no. let's let fin uh, Mark finish his point, and we'll we'll come right back to you, Austin. Yeah, so, so at, at any rate, I, I have no clue what they're talking about, Erica. I really have no clue for you. Okay. Um, I don't know how to help you on this one. You show, we can show the species that have gone extinct. Um, we can show how we've gotten to this point. We can show the genetics. We can show the retroviruses that have been inserted over the last four, five, six million years. I don't know what more... What more can we do? Like, at what point do you just throw your hands up in the air? I don't even know what to say for this. And they're just going to keep asking it over and over the same silly question that I don't know how we're supposed to. But you nailed it. It really comes down to if we came from monkeys, why are there why are there still monkeys? Hey, that, that's what I that's what I thought I was. Yeah, saying. that's what I'm hearing too. The same stupidity just, over no, and over. What? Why are y'all talking to each other and misrepresenting my argument? What 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 are you doing? Austin, that's that's yeah, that's not Austin. Awesome. A white flag. Where's a white flag? They're waving a white flag right now, Austin. Go that's ahead awesome. and tell us again what it is exactly you would like us to show you. And and I wanna I wanna clarify. I I am not attempting to straw in you. I genuinely this has never happened to me where I I straight up have no idea. If, if, if what I said wasn't an answer to your question, I don't know what your question is. And I'm really sorry. Just concede you don't have an answer. No, because I don't know what the question is. It's, it's, it's like third me, grade level. It feels like you're asking me a question in another language and then asking me to answer the question. Oh, uh, no, it's a very simple. Recap. Real quick, Austin. So you're saying that there's 17 different kind of monkey men where monkeys turned into humans, right? But Apes. unfortunately, they're all dead and your only proof is fossils. And Mark said, we can take all the fossils and throw those in the trash. So what we're wondering is what you, we can see today with our eyes and observe real science, right? Not theoretical, not pushing it back millions of years. Where are the intermediary species or are they all dead? And your only proof is, look, we have bones and they kind of match. So are you asking if evolution is still going on and are there any intermediates today? No. Do you want me to repeat? Like no, everything? I, I, I mean, I, I pulled up- I've already gone over how you believe evolution is still going on today. Yeah, I've, I've pulled up the chat though, Nathan, and I'm genuinely g hoping that someone in the chat actually understands what either of you is saying because no one seems to, even the creationists that I talk to, don't English? seem to know what you're saying. English anymore? We're not speaking English? No. No, I, you're I, not. I genuinely no, you're actually not. not. That's the funny thing. You're not. All right, guys. So you heard it. The debaters that I've been debating all night tonight just said, I'm not speaking English. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea what you would like to know. You, yeah, you would simple. like to know. So if, if dogs came from wolves, Where's the intermediate species between wolf to dog? Is that what you're asking for? No, I asked you very Would simply. Would that work though? Would that work for you? Because we came 
from an earlier ape that we have con continually evolved from an ape. So do you understand that you can take an ape, then that ape can, can wander off as a group, not an individual, as a group, it can wander off like Erica tried to explain to you. And it can move its way off, let's say into the jungle and then evolve in a way that makes it the best for his life. He lives in the jungle. And guess what? He becomes successful. The people that wandered off from the group off into the savanna, guess what? They all got pegged off by lions. They never became successful, but they did that for two or 300 years and then they became extinct. Just like the Neanderthal, they wandered off and they're actually saying that the Neanderthal's brain was bigger than ours. It just didn't have the same complexity. And you guys just sit there and laugh like clowns. This is funny. But they say that they wandered off, that they had a bigger brain, but they weren't quite as good at thinking things out as we were. And guess what? They ended up going extinct, but we bred with them. We have their bones. We have their genetic code and we have our genetic code and we have three to 4% of their genetic code in our genetics. Wait, Which do we part have their of this do you code? not understand? Do we have their genetic code or our genetic code? Because what you're all effectively doing right now is telling us fairy tales. Yeah. So can you answer the question with specificity, like an adult instead of ad homs? So I'm asking a very specific question. What's the ad hom? I'm telling you how it yeah, happened. Yeah. Okay, check this, bro. If it's a constant process over millions of years, there would be some observable intermediate species because you claim the evolution is still happening. I don't need to hear your fairy tales about they went over here to a jungle. It means nothing. Okay, you want to hear about a fairy tale? Listen to me for two seconds. So birds went up to the Arctic. They went to the Antarctic. They became penguins. How did that happen? Explain that to me. Birds became penguins? Do you have any evidence of that? No, a bird is a penguin. What are you talking about? A bird is a penguin. A penguin is a bird and it can no longer fly. You know why it can't fly? Because for it to live where it lives, it had to gain a fat layer that would allow it to be able to live in minus 40, 50, 60 degrees Celsius weather. Hmm. So how, how oh. do you not see that we have hummingbirds at the equator that weigh less than an ounce and yet we have these huge birds at the poles that are covered in fat. They've evolved to live there. So are you saying if there are penguins, where are the intimate, where are the rest of the birds? Is that what you're asking us? Because we're at a loss here. If your guys' argument is that all this evolution happens over millions and millions of years, but then you tell us a story how birds traveled to the Arctic and didn't die didn't freeze to death, and somehow over millions of years miraculously develop dozens of pounds of fat. Who right? said millions of years? Oh, th hundreds, thousands. The thing is, is, as soon as they showed up without all that fat, they would die. Okay, let me let me ask a question. Wow. I think I think this Did this it? is my this is my attempt to try to figure out. <laughs> if you're if you're asking something that that can be an, that can be answered one and two that is something that evolution claims so let me ask austin and nathan if let's let's live in opposite world for a second and you guys both accept evolution what would your intermediate species look like i don't know i don't i don't adhere to your fairy tale religion no, yeah, but that's that's so that's my point. If you can't if you can't even imagine what an intermediate right. species is, when it's not a transitional, it's clearly something else. You know, my, the only thing I can think of is that you're asking why, say, Australopithecus afarensis isn't alive today. And oh, the, you said a word with a bunch of syllables. No, the point is, yeah, it transitions. Austin, that's the, Austin, That's its name. That's cool just the name story. of the. Animal. You, you are claiming the transition. You are claiming this religion. You are claiming the fairy tale. I don't have to go into detail about your fairy tale postulation. I'm asking you, where is the proof of it? Okay, it's very simple. You can't just say, oh, well, conveniently, they're all gone. All the evidence is gone, but I promise yeah, it's right. right. But you, Mark says, Erica, Mark Erica says, what, it, what it comes down Erica to. Erica says they're all dead. Hold on. So Erica. You show a bunch of evolving zombie oh, animals. 
short and pithy. Go ahead. So, Go ahead, Erica. So, Erica, what they're asking for is they would like you to, 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 to deliver to them the absolute volumes and volumes. It would take up tractor trailer loads to get them all of our evidence. They would like you just to show it to them right now. Just, you know, just show me, yeah. you know, the millions and millions of hours of millions of yeah. scientists that have worked on this. Just, just show me, you know, where, where's this intermediate species you're appealing, you're appealing, about? you're appealing to authority again? No, it's not authority. It's yeah. not authority. It's hey. like anything. Listen up clown. Okay. Here's how it works. When a bunch of engineers get together and they tell you what it takes to make an airplane fly, we go with those people. That's well, why we don't have a bunch of millennials like you sitting around with your hats on telling us what it's going to take to make an airplane fly, you clown. We, okay, we, we, rely, we rely on educated people to get us places safe, safely. Or is that a conspiracy too? Are the jets out there just to kill us? Or, or what's your opinion no, on that? We jets? get to see planes fly, bro. Yeah, I've been in a plane. I fly about once a month. It's really? a terrible analogy. Yeah. Did you get to the edge yeah. of the flat earth? Or how oh, did that work out for you? Wow. So you're going to presuppose an edge that nobody's ever seen and then ask us if we... Oh, a pre oh so the, the flat earth the has edge. no edge. There, yeah. There's one for you. The Definitely flat you earth has the no I edge. Yeah. Mark, and then when the, we flew over the edge, the pilot actually got on the loudspeaker and said, ladies and gentlemen, if you look to the right of the cabin, we are flying over the edge. Go ahead, the Erica. They, this, like yeah, my I, wife said, I, these, these I, guys I, are just I, clowns. Go ahead. I've, I've never... I've never asking me if a commercial jet flew around the edge of the earth. Dude, you are a total joke. Okay. Honestly, I've never. Of course I I've am, never... and ninety-nine percent of the scientists in the world agree with me. But you're a little twenty-two-year-old who thinks you know wow. everything. We're gonna wow. kick, wow. kick wow. over, Everyone kick it over to so Erica right. again. Yeah, get it back to Erica. Right. These guys are just idiots, James. That's how you we're gonna give it to yeah. Erica. Closing statements. These guys are idiots. Look at them. <laughs> Another yeah, insult. Erica, Erica look bad. Well, okay, we've got to, we've got to hand it over to Erica. All right, hey. here we go. Yeah, I, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of, of talking over people. I've, I've never had this experience before. You Neither know? have I. These you guys mean, are just idiots. Why do you keep interrupting your partner? But um, anyways, yeah, I, I honestly, I don't even know where to begin with this because, because my problem here is that at least with, with individuals like, um, I don't know, other creationists that Mark and I have both talked to, like we've both talked to Standing for Truth. Standing for Truth has a, has an understanding of you know, what biology is, what is selection, what is natural selection, what's sexual selection, what are, what are basic terms in biology? And I feel like when you ask questions like, why didn't every organism in a lineage survive? Or alternatively, tell me which organisms are intermediate species today because they're going to evolve into something else, essentially saying which ones are or not going to go extinct. Um, it's, it's very difficult to explain when, when your interlocutors don't, I mean, I, I don't mean this in an insulting fashion. I just genuinely am not certain that there, that there are definitions that we can agree on. Um, like, I, I don't know if I asked, you know, what, what is natural selection? I don't know what answers I would get. Um, whereas in the past, like, I don't know, with G-Man, like I, I know G-Man knows what natural selection is. Um, and, and we disagree on just about everything. So I, I, I you know, honestly, James, I, I, I just don't, I don't really know where to go from here. Normally these, You're these conversations. Like, like, let's just let her finish. Uh, I promise we can come right back to you guys for a quick rebuttal. So but... that's, that's, that's all I had to say. I mean, the fact that we're still on the first question is mind blowing to me. She wants to go away from the question. This is the third time she's effectively done the same thing. She's recapped it inaccurately because she doesn't have an answer and she can't be honest and concede she doesn't have an answer. You say that evolution is still happening. That means apes are still evolving. Where are the ones that are still evolving, Erica? That is the question. You yeah, they're all here. Every animal is evolving still. And Where Austin, are the ones in between? Austin, and all you did was say, show me some intermediate species. And you see how she twists your words and says, why didn't every intermediate species survive? No, we're not over here saying every intermediate species should have survived. Can you please, and maybe we can get to a second question. If you would listen to what we were saying and stop strawmanning arguments with our words. Move on, moron. Move, move on. on. Monkeys. No, no, it's okay, Mark. Honestly, I, I, move I, I, on. Don't, move I don't. On. 
I don't find I'll answer them right now. You want to know details. intermediate species that are still alive? Bonobos are still alive. Japanese macaques are still alive. How many monkeys would you like me to explain to you that are still alive, that have grown up with us alongside us? How many more would you like? Because I believe there's species wise, there's about 600 species of monkeys and apes in the world. So how many would you like? Or do they not work? Are they the wrong ones? Are, are they not the intermediates that you're looking I th I for? I think they're all the wrong ones, Mark. I don't think there I is. I think everything's right wrong one. for these guys. I, I really do. I don't think there's a right answer. They're just going to keep pretending that they're asking a different question. I think no, what, we, what we, are, we should do is we will go to Q&A shortly because we have that double header tonight. So we do have to be uh exactly on time otherwise nephilim free and tom jump will destroy me so i do want to maybe take a little bit more time if you guys have any closing thoughts drawing together the threads for your side and then we can go into the q a so thanks so much it's been a wild one cool i got one more question for you okay so uh do you have a counter to biogenesis being that, you know, living something, living organism can only come from something else that's living. Do you have a counter to that? Well, that's another reason why I feel like you just didn't watch my opener because I covered, I covered in that, that this is a conversation, right, about, and this is why, and I, again, I'm not, I'm not trying to be mean, but this is why I don't think that this conversation was ever going to be fruitful because we're not dealing with the same definitions. If you think that biogenesis or abiogenesis have anything to do with evolution, then that's, that's the problem you have to start with right there. They're not. I say the monkey came from a rock. Hold on, Nathan, we do have have to give them a chance to respond. You guys say a dog Nathan, we do have to give them a chance to respond. Cool. Yeah, but see, see, here's, see, here's the thing. On the surface, so here's this the is thing. Male religion, okay? Yeah, so Nathan, I hate to do this, but I do have you on mute. So go ahead, yeah. Erica, and then I promise <laughs> I'll unmute you in a second, yeah, here's, Nathan. Here's the thing, though, Nathan. Even Kent Hovind accepts that abiogenesis is something different than evolution. When I had that- Oh, well, Ken accepts it. All right, that's good. Well, let's close the gosh, book. okay. <laughs> Should not have taken you off mute. Okay. I've, no, got, it's, it's, I've got you back on mute, Nathan, for just a moment yeah, until I mean, this thought yeah. can be finished. Can I, take, can I take the dot from you for a second, Erica? <laughs> the, so yeah, so nobody, nobody said that the earth came rolling out of a dot or, or the universe or any of the matter as it stands. I've said this in a previous debate. It was about 300 million years before energy started to coalesce into matter. <laughs> so nobody has ever, ever, and you can laugh all you want. Like your, your ignorance of You of, say that with such conviction. Like it. All right, let's just let uh, Mark you, finish this point. We'll go to me, Okay, hold on. Are you telling me that you can right now overturn Einstein's master theory is that what you're telling oh, yeah. me that that oh, oh you can yeah we can have a debate about that einstein was more, you just blindly Please. believe everything he says yeah we know mark oh there you go That's there you go have, eric, okay. hey, bro, eric and i, I will wrap it up on that I mean, shut up the theory of eric, relativity the theory erica of relativity. and i the shut theory, up no the theory of relativity okay. yeah, yeah, right. of let's see here we I will respond though the theory um, just, oh yeah, I think, <laughs> hold on, I think both Nathan and Austin, wait, just give me one second. Um, we can give wow. you a chance to respond. I, I think that you guys were both speaking at the same time. I appreciate your yeah. passion. So uh, either Austin or Nathan. Okay, yeah, he just, he just acted like he just appealed to Einstein's theory. The theory of relativity is a reification fallacy. It attributed a property to a privation. Space is a privation. You cannot attribute physical property to privations. Space and time are both conceptual abstraction. They cannot have physical properties. It's a reification fallacy. Einstein reified space. Right, yeah, right. Making the question by assuming the speed of light, that's never <laughs> been measured or tested. Sorry. The speed of light has never been measured or tested? Did you really say that? You heard me. You just repeated it. The speed of light. Let me repeat we'll it, again it again for everybody. Okay. Has never been measured. So the thing that we continually measure down to, I think we're up to 40 decimal points now, and we've measured it six different ways. We've never measured it. Well, where's your vacuum that's as strong as space? 10 to the seven, 10 to the negative 17 tor. 
where you can test the speed of light in a vacuum that you're claiming it travels in. How messed up are you? It's called <laughs> space, <laughs> dude. You're that it's awesome? called space. <laughs> no, we have a shitload of it around our atmosphere. It's called space. Hey, we hey, can that, measure I think this that stuff. may be a good time to go into the Q and A. I yeah, hate to do please this. go into Q and A. Let uh, people ask these clowns some questions because this do this appreciate is real everybody stupidity. being here. It's been a wild one, folks. I do want to say first, thanks so much to our speakers who I have linked. So those links are in the description. I don't know what that blip was before where for some reason it wasn't showing, but we we're all set there. So do encourage you if you're listening and you're like, hmm. I like that. Well, you can hear plenty more where that came from. Also, want to say, I forgot to mention, uh, basically, if you have a question, fire it into the old live chat, and we'll try to get through as many as we can. We do have another debate coming up right after this, and that's going to be with Nephilim Free and Tom Jump on whether or not dinosaurs lived with man. Tom seems to disagree strongly with Nephilim Free. We'll see if Neph can convince him. Next up, appreciate your super chat, though. First up, from uh, Michael Dresden. Thanks for your super chat. Usually a troll. Don't know if you're super, but he says, uh, hit like. So thanks for that, at least, Michael. Appreciate that support. Also, next up, thanks for your super chat. Let's see, opposer of religion. I'm going backwards here. This is, I always kind of prioritize. They said, can we see Mark destroy Nathan's flat earth myth? Yeah, we'll do it next time. Like I said, I'll I'll put money down on this one. We'll see if he has any money to put down. He doesn't look like anyone who has a job, but if he can even pull together 10 bucks, we'll see if we can get a bet going on this. And I'll show you exactly how we know that the Earth is round and how we know the exact speed and height of the satellites going over the top. Exactly. Down to, we, we will get it down to arc seconds if you want. It'll travel exactly the speed it's supposed to. But we'll see if he can pull together 10 or, 10 or 20 bucks. We'll see. Can gotcha. I respond, Jamie? We uh, have to keep moving. Next up, oh. thanks so much. Or oh, wait, Nathan, sorry, I didn't give you a chance. Did you say you'll accept? No, I want to respond. Yeah, I, I try to set up the debate tomorrow. Uh, you said you couldn't do it. I try to set it up for Sunday. I'd love to do that. Also, so, uh, listen to how this guy says, oh, you probably don't have a job. Yeah, some people are self-employed. Some people own a business. Some people are investors like Bill Gates and Warren Buffett, they don't have jobs. Are they losers too, Mark? Well, no, yeah, they have we, jobs. We, like, uh, they have jobs. Is that what you are, an investor? You're just oh, okay. a Nathan owns Apple. Pull okay. together a thousand bucks and we'll have a bet. How's we, that? We, uh, it, I'm willing to host. I usually, like Sunday, I, I'm just usually uh, pretty tired out. But if you guys would like, I'd be willing to host uh, Mark and Nathan on Sunday on a Flat Earth debate if that would be, if you guys would really like to me up gotcha okay well we'll we'll see uh we can email and figure out if that can work so i can't guarantee it sunday folks but we'll see uh maybe eventually here on this channel so thanks so much for your super chat from appreciate it brian stevens thanks they said mark in all caps <laughs> next week's meeting is at 2 p.m same place no idea me neither. Florida man, thanks for your super chat. Says Lord Frog laughs at creationism. Must be a critic of you guys. Kang, O two four. Thanks for your super chat. They say question for the creationists. In parentheses, these two idiots. Please explain pesticide resistant insects. Uh, so you got a critic there, gentlemen. Uh, they said please explain pesticide resistant insects. Uh, well, I don't need to explain insects and the necessary antecedent to creation as a creator. Gotcha. Thanks so much for your, let's see, super chat from Craig Montgomery. The stupid, it burns. Watch as they try to claim biblical creation with no evidence is the default position. Must be a critic of you guys. Didn't happen one time. Didn't happen once. Sorry, Globehead. Sigifredo Sarabia, thanks for your super chat. They might be a flat earther. You never know. So they no, say. I was definitely Globehead, James. Don't give him that. They say <laughs> Erica is ast Astelopithecus the same as hominids. How did they mate and not create a hybrid, as you previously explained, is impossible in what's 
explanation for knuckle and what is the explanation for knuckles or knees going against morphology so kind of two questions there if you want to take one yeah sure I, I, that's that's a very very answerable question i very much appreciate that i was kind of shocked um yeah so the difference between first of all let's clarify afarensis is a hominid so all of the australopiths pretty much you know i mean technically depending on the definition that you use living apes are, are also hominids um, as for hybridization, I think they're referring to the last time when I spoke where I, I mentioned that divergence time and speciation time are indeed different, which means that we probably had some interbreeding for about maybe three, four million years between sort of the branch off of, of our lineage and that of genus Pan. Now, I, I guess what they're asking is, is why we have like, it's a, it's a little hard to kind of suss it out, why we have like locking knuckles and afarensis, I suppose. Um, the, the pressure to get rid of locking knuckles would come far after the, the movement to bipedality, which is indeed what we see in Afarensis. I had a pretty long video about why we know Afarensis was bipedal, if you want to check it out on my channel. Gotcha. Um, but um, the hybridization thing, I, I, I hope I previously answered that to, to the extent that they wanted, which is that statistically speaking, it's highly unlikely that our fossil specimens are going to come from, from hybrids. Uh, particularly because hybrids, the further away you get from that speciation and divergence time, uh, the less viable they're likely to be. Um, I hope that I hope that was appropriate. Gotcha. Thanks so much. Appreciate your super chat, John Lloyd, who said, "Evolutionist using ad homs. Wow, how intellectual! They got a critic. Uh, got a critic of you, Mark or Erica." That would be for me. Erica's been very uh, <laughs> cordial tonight. She really has. I, I got to apologize to her too. Like this is just, this blew me away right from the very beginning. We shouldn't have had that long opener where I had that chance to talk to Nathan. It's just, uh, you know, well, anyways, move yeah. on. Gotcha. Next up. Thanks for your super chat. Kang024 who said question for the clowns or these creationists, please explain the vestigial structures found in aquatic mammals. No, <laughs> that proves your freaking theory. Yeah, because because whales have veins. Conspiracy. It's a conspiracy. Gotcha. My guess, just to give context, my guess is they're maybe talking about the alleged kind of hip bones in the whale. They're saying these are usually considered vestigial structures by scientists. That's my guess. Of unless Erica, if you know if there's maybe something they might be referring to. I mean, you know, I, I, I would assume that of all the vestigial structures that you're going to go for with, with the cetaceans, that's going to be the one. Yeah. Yeah, the hip bones there, the leg bones are there. It's all there. It's just, it's become very minimal. Just like if you look at a, a emu, it has what looks like little arms just hanging down. They're not even, they don't even have muscles attached to them anymore. Well, uh, very vestigial. Interestingly enough, for those of you out there who who do find this kind of stuff compelling, oops, sorry. Um, if you go and look up some embryological pictures, uh, embryology, sorry, pictures of, of cetaceans, you'll actually see that for an early set, about the first couple of weeks, they actually have hind limb buds that grow out due to the original instructions that they that were in their DNA to kind of form them, and then they disappear, which is quite interesting. You can see you can see them in in stunning HD. We can give you yeah, a chance and, and to, chickens, hold on one second, just, so, just so we don't have too much teaming on. Uh, we, I want to give these guys a chance. I want to give these guys a chance to respond. Yeah, uh, go ahead. And then, and then we'll go to the next one. If you guys want to respond, you can. If you don't want to, you don't have to. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's pretty simple, man. It has to be substantiated postulation of intermediate species. It can't just, you know, claim some unfalsifiable fairy tale. It's really that simple. So it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. Take a next up, Sunday oh. Warship. Thanks for your super chat. Who said Nathan Thompson uses Internet Explorer. Is that your chosen browser, Nathan? <laughs> gotcha. Next up, King024. He's em you've embarrassed him. That's the first time I've seen Nathan embarrassed. They said, a question for the special, oh, they said special children. Please explain. I think they, I don't know who they're refer re re referring to. They say, please explain why there are genetic similarities between chimpanzees and humans. That's the way that it was made. James, if they're insulting us, they're space monkey globe heads. Okay. If they're insulting who they're asking the question to, definitely space monkey globeheads. You don't have to wonder who they're asking the question to. It's coming right. Awesome. John Arnold. Lloyd, thanks for your super chat. Who said, Mark, please try and be kind. No pressure. Love you. 
I know this tonight. I, I lost my shit. This is the first time that I've done it. I've actually been known as being fairly, uh, fairly uh, calm headed. But man, you know, you just you hear this ignorance and you just it's it's beyond belief. You know, they're yeah, answers. Right. Uh, I'm talking. I'm talking. So keep her down there, clown. Uh, so, you know, they're anti-vaxxers, they're anti-globe, they're anti-evolution, they're anti-every... Look at this clown on this. Anything I believe. This is the kind of... Next this up. is the kind of... <laughs> dealing with here. Just a moron. We appreciate your questions, and uh, thanks so much for your super chat from Aaron Armstrong. Seemed to agree. They said, turn the bald guy down. Mark, you do have that action hero look. I don't, I've don't. i said this before. In the thumbnail, if Mark doesn't look like an action hero with the stone cold, you know, uh, shaved head and also the uh, goatee, I don't know who does. Movie Theory, thanks for your uh, super chat, who said, uh, team creation already won, debate done. Quite confident yeah. coming from that side. If you want, you can respond or you don't have to. Okay. Kings, you're, <laughs> you guys don't look that concerned. They said, question for the creationists. Uh, from King024, why would cr a creator uh, make this organism, the Lao Lao, a type of nematode? Why Why would a creator make what he made? I don't know. Gotcha. I'm not the creator. It, well, in particular, they're asking about the Lao Lao, which is a type of nematode. Same well, answer. Nematode, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Michael Dresden, thanks for your super chat. Uh, said Nathan and Austin already won. This is over. You've got a fan there. Um, Talisan Overlander. Thanks for your super chat. Who said Nathan makes G-Man look and sound intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> Mark likes that. Okay, Nathan, you Nathan, you can respond if you don't. If you want, you don't have to. If you don't want to. Oh, they're just insulting G-Man there. So and me, and so they're Globehead. We oh, love yes. you, G-Man. If you're watching, G you know what? Originally, this debate, <laughs> G-Man was going to be a part of this debate. Originally, it was going to be wild. But John Lloyd, thanks for your super chat. Who said, "Smile, Erica. You'll make a great teacher or professor." Are you planning on being a professor? I I hope to get there at some point. I would love to do to do some teaching along with uh, research. So, but we'll we'll see. I got to get my master's. Quiet, you. All right, go ahead. You said teaching and research. Okay. Yeah, I, I hope Eric to get my master's. All oh, I hear don't worry, is I'll mute him. Okay, Nathan, I told you. Uh, so. No, it's okay. Honestly, James, I I I don't get rattled by that kind of stuff. I'm not. You know, it's it's whatever. I mean, I I would prefer to to have conversations with people who who like want to have a conversation, but um. Yeah. Hey, Eric, can I ask you a sincere yeah. question? It, um, I know you've probably devoted a lot of time to this, right? And I can understand why it would be hard to ever consider the fact that maybe it isn't real. But have you ever actually considered the fact that maybe evolution isn't real? Well, it's, it's interesting that you asked that because I used to be a young Earth creationist. Um, when I was a young, when I was a youth, I was a young Earth creationist. Um, and, and it was actually exposure to, to a greater volume of, of science and literature that, that changed my mind. And also seeing it for myself, you know, I, I got to go to, I got the utmost pleasure to go to Old Divide Gorge and see, you know, the places where these fossils were, were pulled up. And I've gotten the pleasure of being in a lab and seeing some of this genetic work, um, running assays and things like that. Um, so, so yeah, I, I would say, I, I mean, I'm always open to, honestly, Austin, I, I really try to be open to, to all kinds of evidence. Um, I, I, I just, I feel confident in, in my position because I've, I've spent so much time seeing it for myself and performing the experiments that are, are required, um, usually a part of curriculum. Um, Erica, you are you No, oh, Nathan, we were enough for you. We got to keep on, moving. On, Nathan, awesome. well, that James, super chat okay, was for her. Nathan, James, cut me some James, slack. James, it's okay, James. Erica, are your parents yes. religious? Um, yes. Yes, you were, you were never a young earth creationist. You were raised in a religion home and you rejected it. And that's why you can repeat all your scientific bullshit is because you have a problem with what your parents did to you as a kid. No, both my parents yeah. are cool with what I do. Yeah. They're, they're, they're both theistic evolutionists. They're Scientologists, Nathan. Jeez. Okay. I made that up. Okay. Sorry, Nathan. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry, Erica. Uh, they, I, are they really Scientologists? My parents? Yeah. Oh, God. oh, you got really quiet. Okay. Sigifredo Sarabia, thanks for your super chat, who said, Mark, how do you not have an answer for transitional animals when 2020 adds uh, millions of years from 4 million be because name animal giving birth to something it can't mate with? 
Well, <laughs> did you, I didn't get that, but go ahead if you got it. I actually did get it. So, so basically what they're doing, it's, it's like Kent Hovind's, uh, um, argument, you know, the first dog, or I think Ray Comfort pushes this one. There, there's a bunch of ignorant people out there that don't understand science that push these kind of things. And they'll ask questions like, well, what did the first um, dog mate with? What did it mate with? Where, where did it find a female dog? You know, it had to develop eyes and it had to look around and find a female dog to mate with. No, we've never said that individuals uh, evolve. Individuals don't evolve. Groups evolve. And if the group isn't large enough to evolve, it will go extinct. That's how evolution works. Once something gets down to a point where there's not enough genetic diversity, you've got an extinction event. And that is how we know now that we are going to, like in my backyard, I have 12 uh, lions and tigers. When we lose lions and tigers, we're not going to grab two house cats and rebreed tigers and lions. That's not going to happen. That's how we know that we have evolved to the point where we are now. And I, I really Short hope you understand this. Thanks so much. Pardon my rudeness, but just to keep things moving, appreciate it. Next up, your super chat. Uh, let's see. Ping Fan Ren and Sean Hawkins, thanks for your super chats. We're going to get to those. We're working through the old list. Ian, YouTube L Ian, thanks for your super chat, who said, creation wins again. Evolution is so comical. Fossils don't happen by the millions today. The most reasonable explanation is Noah's flood. Prove us wrong. I mean, that would that would take an entire additional conversation. I I would love to talk about Noah's flood. I I you know I, I think originally I was going to have a conversation with Kent about that quite some time ago, but I don't think we ever followed up. And uh, he has some new requirements for for debating that um, I'm not entirely down with. Um, but yeah, I, I good question. There's a lot of great conversations about it out there, especially here on James's channel. I would encourage you to check it out and and see what you think. Yeah, I'd love to talk with Erica about Noah's Noah's flood and uh, take on a couple people. That that'd be a that'd be a blast. Mm -hmm. You got it. And Michael Dresden, thanks for your super chat. Who said, "Team creation already won. Debate done." In all caps. That's okay. And Snake was right. Thanks for your super chat. I love the day the poses. Uh, Snake was right. They said. Taylor said, why do penguins have bird wing bones in their fins instead of fin bones? For Nathan. That's how they were designed. Gotcha. Thanks for your super chat. Kango24, who said, fact for the clowns or creationists tonight. They say coelocanths, lungfish, and amphibians are direct transitional forms between lobe-finned fish and fully terrestrial tetrapods. Prove it. Yeah, prove it. Gotcha. Maynard saves thanks to your super chat who said, for Flat Earth, how did the White Cliffs of Dover form? I've never heard of the White Cliffs of Dover, and I run the largest Flat Earth group in the world. So if you have some information on it, email me, flatearthflyers at gmail.com. And Erica, a theistic evolutionist is an oxymoron. Can you imagine never hearing of the White Cliffs of Dover? In okay, next Come up. On, P. Barnes. Oh, my God. God, P. Barnes, thanks. the fours, you clown. That's thanks where they your... came from. All right, we gotta keep creatures. moving, Mark. All right, Little P. Barnes, P. Creatures, Barnes, Mark. All right, P. Barnes, thanks for your super chat. They said, "I actually wish that G-Man was in this discussion instead of this disrespectful guy with the globe on his head." I need a shower. Why would you need a shower? I, I Me wish, too. Me I too. Wish, I wish G-Man was here as well. I had a great time with G-Man. He he was a blast to talk to. I, very lovable. I, um, yeah, he's he's very he's fun. fiery in a in a different way. He is. And holy skepticism. Thanks for your super chat. Who says the spirit of the non sequitur show lives on here? LOL. Well, glad you're. Uh, I think it sounds like you're enjoying it. Appreciate that. Craig Montgomery. Thanks for your super chat. I didn't see a, a question with it. Shoot it in the old live chat and tag me with at modern day debate. If you wanted me to ask a question, I'll, I'll, I'll put it in the super chats for you. The wandering musician. Thanks for your super chat. They said, I love to debate my gnostic atheist and theist friends erica and mark are by far the better debaters more respectful and i'm proud of how you debated got a fan out there guys Very kind of yeah you. i'm not i lost it tonight i i should have stayed calmer it's just really hard around these clowns 
Next. There you go. You you, you okay. apologize for ad homing with another one. I know. Oh, poor baby. Oh, gee. Look at this guy. Look Next up. Appreciate uh, Adam Abilia. Thanks, Albilia. Thanks for your uh, question. They said, off subject, Nathan, how long would it take for an object to hit the ground if released from 10 meters above it? Did you use 9.8 meters per second squared? If not, WTF? Well, this globe so I think means uh, that globe head is obviously not dropping that object in water. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, and it's just an agreed upon average relative to the medium, like he said. So, cool story. Yep. yep. Appreciate it. Brian Stevens. No, it is isn't. Brian it's, Stevens. The, it's the acceleration of gravity. It has nothing to do with what media it's in. Basically, uh, Brian Stevens, uh, vacuum, thanks for you your clown. Patreon question. Who said, is COVID a conspiracy? No, Everything they, is. You, no, well, there's an inflation of numbers. They got everybody locked in their homes because of a cartoon bug on the news. Mm -hmm. But no, that's for sure real. And all the hospitals are empty. All the independent researchers that are going out there and filming it. And also the same symptoms of COVID happened from 5G. So you got to research that too. We, if yeah, someone, actually, that's actually if someone truth, wants to right debate in. Nathan on this topic, we we are uh, I will take their offer. Let me yeah, know I'll tell like you to. right now, five G is not powerful enough to ionize, so no, it's it's not a problem at all. So no cell ionization at all. Not a high enough the, frequency. Not a high enough power level. So with no. The compilation, with the Just compilation, the clown. The, with the compilation of all the RF propagation, there would eventually still be some ionization, actually. RF, what are you talking about? Uh, Nathan Nathan Thompson, would you debate Steve wow. McRae on whether or not COVID is uh, the real deal? Yeah, of course. I'm happy to do that. And if he wants to find a teammate, I'll bring Austin with me too. Gotcha. Next up, thanks for your super chat from the Chad, who says, question for Erica. Can you explain to Austin and Nathan what descent with inherent modification is? Thank you. No. Uh, I, you I can't. I, I really, honestly, I, I try to be honest about my abilities. I, I don't think that I can. No. Um, you know, I, I, I've brought that up in every other debate that I've ever had and all my other interlocutors from, from Hoven through Standing to G-Men, uh, Praise, uh, you know, Bill Morgan, all of them. They, they, I didn't have to give that definition uh, or explain it, but here it seems to be a different story. Um, Again, I'm. I don't mean that to be insulting. I just genuinely don't think if I had all the time in the world, I I could. Yeah. Oh, I could we genuinely do don't that. care. So. Next up, Flat Earth Aussie Roscoe. Thanks for your super chat. Who says just show one random mutation which turned out to be beneficial and hereditary? Simple. <laughs> Oven virus. How's that? There you go. There's a mutation that was very adventation and it's kicking the shit out of us today so there you go it's a sars it's a sars uh um uh virus and it has mutated very beneficially and it's kicking the shit out of us yeah, this year. yeah the S protein has a hundred percent match to uh, a human virus so it was made in a lab mark did you know that sure it was it's a conspiracy next uh <laughs> thank you for you agree on something red stupid. cosmos devil thanks for your super chat they said Natalie, curious, what is your evidence for God? Uh, well, God is the creator, and I don't know if that person's blind or not, but if you open your eyes, there's obviously a creation, so there has to be a creator. Gotcha. Next up, Speed of Sound of Gravity, thanks for your super chat, who said, to the fund for better creationists. You got a critic out there, guys. Opposer of religion, thanks for your super... Oh, we asked that one. Craig Montgomery, thanks for your super chat, who said, Oh my, who here comes Austin's word salad? Austin, is it true that you uh, use word salad? No, just apparently some people don't understand the words that I use. They think that yeah. equates to that making me stupid. Gotcha. Sam Davey, thanks for your super chat, said, Erica, you have the patience of a saint. Even when they try to change the subject, hope you're keeping safe during this COVID lockdown. I, I feel like, you know, I, like I said, uh, I don't know if I actually said this in a previous debate or not, but I was flying um, in the, I was flying when the COVID virus was ramping up in, in the UK. I flew back through Montreal and then down here back to the States. Um, and they had to they had to medically evacuate a guy who was on our plane who who was suspected to to be a COVID patient. And then I got sick for about a week after that with all like the the classic symptoms. 
So I'm hoping that I already had it and that I, I recovered and that I'm good to go, but you know, I'm still socially isolating. I don't want to, you know, if I'm still shedding the virus, I don't want to give it to anybody else. Um, as for having patients, honestly, I, I just, I don't really get mad about this kind of stuff. It's, you know, people laughing at me, whatever. I've, I've been there. <laughs> so it's, it's fine. I mean, again, mostly I'm just sad. I, I, you know, Mark and I had a great conversation over the phone earlier today, and I was really looking forward to, to having a fun conversation with my partner here, but well, your yeah, partner constantly yeah. threw uh, around. Yeah, yeah me too, Erica. I really move. was. But, you know, these Let's these see. these are We've just got clowns, to obviously. go to the next one. JD, thanks for your super chat, who said, Austin and Nathan sound like science students using creationism as an excuse to fail Mark and Erica's class. 